Hi, in this tutorial, I will show you how to use Unigraph's playback tool. The playback tool generates scenarios which are outputted by Unigraph's UCD source devices with the purpose of testing sync DUTs. A scenario combines video frames, metadata packets, and audio in a sequence. Scenarios can output a range of content from SDR to HDR video and enhanced gaming features such as VRR and ALLM. The tool is highly flexible in outputting different video formats. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can play predefined scenarios created by Unigraph and also how to edit these scenarios with Playback's built-in scenario editor. Video frames, metadata packets, audio, color mode, and color depth are all parameters that can be edited. The devices I will be using are Unigraph's UCD323, a HDMI 2.0, and DP1.4A generator and analyzer, and UCD301, the analyzer-only version of UCD323. UCD323 will act as the HDMI reference source, and UCD301 will act as the HDMI reference sync. First, open up UCD console and select the device roles for both devices. The playback tab can be found on the TX side of UCD console. The predefined scenarios are contained in playlists that can be opened with the drop down list. By selecting the playlist, UCD source device will play out all scenarios in the list. Alternatively, each scenario can be played individually. The first scenario I will play to demonstrate playback's capability is the SDR HDR scenario. The scenario can be found in the HDR and metadata example playlist. Click run to load the scenario. Details of the scenario being loaded to the UCD source device are shown in this box. After the scenario is uploaded, we can observe the video in the preview tab on the RX side of UCD console. We can see that the video is in full HD at 60 Hz with 8 BPC color depth in RGB and a colorimetry of BT2020. To observe the packets that are outputted from the scenario, we can make a capture on the event log on the RX side of UCD console. Make sure packets are selected for the capture and press start. We can see that when SDR video is transmitted, only GCP and AVI packets are sent. When HDR10 video is transmitted, we can see DRM packets are being sent. It is in the DRM packet where HDR10 parameters are set. Next, I will show you how to edit scenarios with the scenario editor. The scenario I will edit is flip-flop with audio. Let's take a look at the scenario first by clicking run. We can see that the video is in full HD at 60 Hz with 8 BPC color depth in RGB. We can also preview the audio in the audio tab on the RX side of the UCD console. To stop the scenario, press stop on playback. Now that we know how to play scenarios, we can dive into the contents that make up the scenario and how to edit them. Before we edit any scenario, we have to find the content folder for playback and copy the files into a destination where we have administrative rights. The location of the content can be found in Unigraph's application folder. The folder that contains content for the flip-flop scenarios is called basic. I have copied the video and audio content into my documents folder, which I have prepared for this tutorial. 
By observing the folder I created, we can see the contents relating to the flip-flop with audio scenario. The flip-flop with audio text file contains the settings of the scenarios, which corresponds to the settings defined in the scenario editor of playback. I have opened the text file and scenario editor side by side so you can see how the scenario editor relates to the parameters written in the text file. In the text file, you can define the location of video and audio to be used in the scenario by copying the location to these fields. First, select the sequence. Then, open the editor. Users will have to select the path where the video files are located. By pressing select, we should find the folder containing the images that will be used for the scenario. They are written in a numerical format, which will be important for the playing order of the scenario. In this folder, I have added an additional image named Image2, which is an upside-down version of Image0. I will modify the scenario to include the third image in the sequence. Make sure Image0 is selected and press Open. Align raw 10-12-bit data to 16-bit has to be checked if you are using non-standard image formats such as binary files. This checkbox is used to define data alignment. If you are using any normal images such as JPEG, PNG, or SVG, do not select this. Since the scenario is using JPEG images, I will leave this box unchecked. Here, you can select if you want to see the frame numbers during playback. Here, you can select the timing of the scenario from this list. If you choose a timing with a higher resolution than the image's resolution, the image will be scaled to match the timing. You can select the color mode and color depth from these lists. Here, you can select the packets that will be used in the scenario. Bin format is used for the packets. I have prepared some example packets for this scenario. Later in this video, I will show you how to create your own packets. Here, you can select the audio that is used for the scenario. Wave format is used for audio in this example. The playing order defines the sequence of video, packets, and color modes used in the scenario. To understand the playing order, let's take a look at this string. A string consists of steps, and each step consists of parts separated by colons. The semicolon represents the end of each step in a string. The first part represents the frames played in the step according to the IDs of each image in the folder of the scenario. The index is zero based, so make sure you mark the first image as number zero. You have three options when defining which frames are played. You can specify a single frame number. You can specify multiple frames to be used separated by comma, such as zero, comma, one, comma, two. Or you can specify a range of frames such as zero to 59. The second part represents the repetition of these frames in the given step. The third part represents the packets used in this particular step based on the packet ID. The fourth part represents the color format and color depth used in this particular step. This table shows the values of the available color formats and color depths. Finally, 
The fifth part is relevant when testing VRR. It is to control frame rate when VRR is enabled. In order to enable VRR, the corresponding EMP packet must be included in the third part of the step, which I will show later. Let's return back to the scenario editor. The edits I want to make in this scenario will be within the playing order. I will write 0 to 2 for the first part, representing the frames played, which will now include the third image located in the video folder. For the second part, I will keep the repetition of frames as 60. Since we are using a frame rate of 60 Hz, the current step will play for one second. For the third part, I will write 0, 1, 2 to add three packets to the step. InfraFrame 0 is a DRM packet, InfraFrame 1 is an AVI packet, and InfraFrame 2 is an audio packet. Finally, for the fourth part, I will change 256 to 512 to change the color depth from 8 BPC to 10 BPC. Scrambler should be set according to link mode required for the selected timing. Scrambler is only required when 6G link mode is used when operating in TMDS mode. Loading color sets the color for the screen while content is being loaded. HDCP can be activated for the scenarios here. Now that I'm done editing the scenario, I can save it by pressing OK. Run the scenario. In video preview, we can see the timing is full HD at 60 Hz in RGB with the color depth of 10 BPC. We can also see that the sequence now has three images. To observe the packets that are being sent, we can make a capture in the event log. Make sure packets is selected for the capture. Press start to capture. We can see that the capture detects GCP, DRM, AVI, and audio packets. The next scenario I will present relates to HDMI's enhanced gaming feature, variable refresh rate, known as VRR. You will be able to find Unigraph's ready-made scenarios under the playlist VRR example HDMI. For this example, I will use the scenario UHD VRR 60. I have also copied the contents of the VRR scenarios from the content folder to my documents folder. Before I edit this scenario, let's see how the original scenario runs. We can see that the resolution of the scenario is at 4K and plays a frame rate of 60 Hz. Now I would like to make a frame rate switch from 60 Hz to 40 Hz for this scenario. I want to have the scenario play for 3 seconds at 60 Hz and 3 seconds at 40 Hz. To do this, I will copy the steps that have 60 Hz frame rate four times, making the string five steps in total. For the last two steps, I will change the V value to 40. For the first three steps, each of the frames from 0 to 59 is played at 1 60th of a second, making it one second for each step 
and a total of three seconds for three steps. For the last two steps, each of the frames 0 to 59 is played at 1 40th of a second, making it 1.5 seconds for each step and a total of three seconds for two steps. Let's bear in mind we are using packets 0 and 4 that can be seen in the third part of the step. I will load these packets into the packet editor so we can observe them in more detail. Click OK to save the edited scenario. Go to Tools and select Packet Editor. The Packet Editor enables the creation and editing of metadata packets that are used in the scenarios played by the playback tool. Select HDMI for the protocol and click Load to locate the first packets used in the scenario. We can observe that it is an EMP VRR packet that is required for sending VRR video. Since VRR enable bit is set to true, VRR is enabled. Now I will load the second packet. We can see that this is an AVI packet, which is required to be sent in all HDMI video. Fields with black font can be edited. For example, if you click on the value cell of the color mode, you can choose between different color modes. Make sure you save any edits you make to the packet. If you want to create new packets yourself, you can select the protocol to be used, DisplayPort or HDMI, and the type of packet you want to create. Press New to create the packet. You can configure the packet parameters to your liking. Don't forget to save when you're done. Let's play the scenario that we edited. In the timing details, we can see the frame rate is changing from 60 to 40. We can also observe in the event log to confirm that the reference sync is receiving EMP packets and that VRR enabled bit is set to true, enabling VRR. In addition, we can observe that the reference sync is also receiving AVI and GCP packets. If you have any questions or need any assistance in the creation of your scenarios, please reach out to us at support at unigraph.fi. Thank you for watching this video tutorial on Unigraph's playback tool.